had a terrific start to our Sunday match series. Luton played a blinder in the potteries. The marshal was quick on the draw. Today we go to Peter Taylor's South End. Their season's picking up speed nicely. Ronnie Whelan's a major factor in that improvement. He's orchestrating the team superbly. Derby County, the division's big spenders, are at Roots Hall. They're under more pressure than ever to succeed. We have all the first division goals as well. David Pleats, our summariser at South End, he'll tell us about his team's amazing win over Middlesbrough. And you can see all the London League goals as well. Brentford are now the capital's best placed team outside the top two divisions. Hello, good afternoon to you all. Well, it's been an excellent Ensley weekend so far for our clubs. Played 10, won 7, drawn 3 is the exact record. And one of those successes provided by Brentford at Bournemouth yesterday. And Brentford managed by our guest this afternoon, David Webb. Webby, welcome. Good performance from your chaps. Well, fantastic at the end of the day, because uh, having a goalkeeper sent off after about 15 minutes uh, caused a bit of mayhem first off, but you know it paid off and they worked, worked very hard to get the result. South End Derby, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, I think it'd be a fantastic game, you know, I think uh, middle of the table clash, but when you've got people like Ricky Otto and Regis on the pitch, there's always something like that's explosive to happen. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, let's uh, pop down to South End, where Peter Taylor's had a testing time since he took over from the exuberant Barry Fry, and here's Peter now talking to Matt Lorenzo. Peter, it wasn't the best of starts to the season, but the last four games have been impressive. You're putting something of a run together. Uh, yes, it was a very poor start, uh, quite rightly so, but uh, we've worked very hard the last four games. We've made a couple of changes, brought some new faces in, and uh, so far, so good. Ronnie Whelan has signed a two-year contract this week. How big a part has he played in the turnaround here? Um, well, he's, he's played a big part, as the two new boys from Birmingham have played a big part as well, you know. But uh, it's just been a, it's been a total team effort. But we're delighted to have Ronnie Whelan here. We've gone ahead with a two-year deal simply because we know that he's going to get even better with us because he hasn't had too many games this season. So uh, he's played his part. He's played his, especially well at home. And, uh, but the team have done uh, very well and deserve their points. Looking forward to seeing Ronnie Whelan in action this afternoon. But now let's reflect the shock result of the weekend. In fact, one of the big upsets of the season so far. Luton without a win at Kenilworth Road against the joint leaders Middlesbrough. Luton 5, the Borough won the result and Gabriel Clark has the evidence. Luton Town's first home win this season was as convincing as it was unexpected. All right, it did take Middlesbrough's Paul Wilkinson to get them underway with the sort of textbook header he's made a career out of at the right end. And for the first half, with Brian Robson sitting it out, Borough were surprisingly ill-disciplined. But Luton's free-flowing football did most of the serious damage. Dwight Marshall's finish was worthy of the move that preceded it. By half-time, they'd equaled the number of goals scored in their five previous home games. Borough simply couldn't cope. David Priest thumped in the third, although Wilkinson again did get a touch as the ball flew in. Robson's response was to push four men into attack and fullback Curtis Fleming into midfield, but that was just made to measure for Luton's swift counter-attacking. Dwight Marshall misses his first chance, but this was a day when everything went right. Soon after, John Hartson's individual performance got the crowning glory it deserved, and on yesterday's form, he's outstripped Scott Oakes as Luton's biggest asset. No goalkeeper would have stopped that shot. 5-0 ended up being 5-1 as Luton decelerated and Borough finally caught up and with seven minutes left finally did something right. David White got the goal. But it didn't spoil a performance they were calling one of Luton's best over the last five years. Well, let's find out how good that performance really was, shall we? If we cross over to uh, South End. And up uh, at the top there, up by the stand on the gantry, is uh, David Pleat. David, I think when we spoke uh, last week, you said that a team was going to catch a really big cold at Kenilworth Road, and uh, Middlesbrough got it in style yesterday. Well, goals change games, Jim, and obviously the first goal we managed to get yesterday. Um, we've dominated a lot of home games, but haven't been able to score, and when the teams have taken advantage and got a goal, they've been very solid, and we haven't had the guile to break them down. But yesterday, yes, it went for us, and it was a very good performance. You let your skipper, Trevor Peake, do the talking for you yesterday. Why was that? No, I, uh, Trevor's a marvellous chap. He's 37. He's done now three years. He's outstripped, um, really, possibly the time that I thought he might be able to do for us. And, um, you, you then, Dave? Yeah, David, who's that in the studio? David who? 
Um, no, he's, he's done exceptionally well, and I thought that it was fitting for really for him, you know, because any one of the 11 players that played yesterday could have gone and spoke on their behalf because it was a team performance. David, thank you very much indeed. And of course, alongside David, we've seen uh, Brian Moore, and Brian Moore, of course, will be your commentator for that match this afternoon. We'll be rejoining them very shortly. David Pleat and Brian Moore for South End and Derby County. Oh, there you go, that'll cure your woodworm. Any more problems, just give us a ring, all right? 24 hour service, she's like. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. Well, it's a bright and breezy day down by the seaside today. It's pretty chilly, the crowd's not the greatest, but in fact, there's a lot hanging on this game. If Derby win it, they go up to seventh in the table. If South End win it, they go up to eighth in the table. The teams for this one, improving South End unchanged for the fifth successive game. Their recent injection of talent really has worked wonders. Whelan and Willis in the midfield, Regis up front with the Scotsman Andy Thompson, who's having an excellent first season since his arrival from Queen of the South. Uh, Ronnie Whelan has won just about everything that's worth winning at Liverpool. Now he's here on a two-year contract to bring quality and experience to this South End midfield. As for the Derby County side, their manager Roy McFarland's really had injury problems, particularly with his strikers, and today Marco Gabbiadini failed a test. So Sturridge will play alone up front, but he's going to play five in the midfield, but what a good and experienced midfield that is. Callens, Hodge, Harks of the US 94 fame, Welsh International Pembridge, and the youngster Lee Carsley. Now Steve Hodge in the second month of a loan from Leeds United. He's played a big part in Derby's recent revival and he's weighed in with four goals as well. Substitutes for South End, Tilson, Bressington and the substitute keeper Royce and Russell Simpson and Sutton for Derby County. Referee Graham Pooley from Hertfordshire. Things really getting better for both these clubs, David. Yes, uh, certainly South End will be buoyed. Ten points in four games is good going in a very competitive league. Derby still got the host of talent, I think, on their books and uh, a little bit disappointing, possibly away from home so far with only a win and a draw on the travels. But they will see today as an opportunity, even though they're short up front of recognised scorers, I think they'll fill the midfield and they'll make it very difficult for South End. South End, of course, hopes will rest much with Ricky Otto on the left-hand side. Very powerful, very progressive, a good shot and a good crosser. It'll be interesting to see his performance today against Gary Charles. You can't underestimate, can you, what an injection of fresh and, uh, in the cases here, of famous faces can do for the confidence in a side. Whedon, of course, and Hodge, Cowens, we saw just a moment ago for Derby and South End in the blue strip get us underway attacking the goal to our left David Week talking about South End's good recent record Whelan just playing it forward that included a victory here against Bolton no mean achievement and a victory up at Sunderland as well Martin Taylor with the kick with the throw for Derby County. And the South End Revival really coming after humiliation with a 4-1 defeat at Stoke and a 5-0 defeat at Wolverhampton. Harry Charles, formerly of London Forest, London boy, getting it back again to Taylor. Long towards Pembridge over on that left side of midfield. Cowens. Great shot. Hodge. Scored two in the league and two in the Anglo Italian. Spurs fans, of course, remember him. So with Nottingham Forest, and Leeds United as well, and Villa. Short challenge there by Dave Regis. Short that time by Mark Holm. Just 
interesting to see Mark Taylor kick the ball twice now. He's kicked the ball and he's kicked it to the wide left position to Pembridge or Hodge. He's shaping up to do it again. That's to avoid kicking rather straight down the middle where Dean Sturridge is giving away a few inches to the tall south end defenders. Parks though finding Hodge. And Pembridge with a shot that's into that nice looking new stand they've got here at Roots Hall. spent maybe some of the Stan Collymore money going there but uh, talking to David Peat a bit earlier we talk a lot about how lovely it is to go to Old Trafford and see the big grounds like Old Trafford and Anfield and Highbury and so on being improved all the while but that's coming right down to this level as well a better deal for fans everywhere and South End just want a few more of them to arrive each weekend and the way they're playing at the moment, they deserve it. But here's Pembridge pushing South End back at the moment. And that's a better looking cross. Sampson started to come for that one. It'll come now for Ricky Otto. Pass it straight to Gary Charles. Not the best of clearance. Back the way there. And back to Paul Sampson. Well, John Hawks there was just uh, not taking up a position at the back post when that excellent cross came in. It was some very neat, incisive passing on the left that led to that ball going in at the back post. Obviously, when you play one up, it's up to the other midfield players to come and support quickly in the box and to make sure that there's bodies to get goal-scoring opportunities. Regis with a good header there, short. Regis again. Challenged by Pembridge. I think Regis must have some kind of record by now. I've got a feeling he was at Stokes Books at the start of the season. That's right. He was at Birmingham for a few weeks. And now here. The Derby move again. John Harps spreading the ball wide there, but Parsley couldn't keep it in play. Birmingham youngster, only 20. Very versatile young player as well. Can play a fullback position, centre back he's played, and in midfield. shot and an excellent save by Paul Sansom looked very comfortable as he took the ball from the throw in and spun round onto his left foot I think he favours his right actually but he hit that with some power and it was well covered by Sansom here's Ricky Otto a real crowd pleaser dancing down that left flank and here he goes playing a little ball in there and it was a shrewd one as well that uh, Short had to stretch out for Regis was just in behind him It's a corner for South End. Andy Edwards had also uh, gone in. And Phil Griddleett had gone in as well. But here's a corner then for South End. A lot of movement in that box. But uh, Williams getting his head to it. And again. Chris Powell. Cowens. Parks chasing this. Powell's going with him. Cowens. Left foot floating it in. Pembridge there with a little back header. And there's the two wide players in the system. Carsley and Pembridge both getting into the six yard box to support uh, Dean Sturridge. Willis knocking that ball forward. Crossed in by Thompson towards Regis. Thompson again, young Scottish lad. Real high hopes for him. He cost them quarter of a million pounds. The number 11, Ronnie Whelan now, trying to get the ball through again. Here's Thompson again, but uh, Williams there first this time. Finnick long, Sturridge chasing. And the Edwards should get there first. Southend are a little unlucky there. I think the ball was 
already out of play. I think they would have settled for the throw-in with Derby, but they're getting a free kick. Towns and Pembridge behind it. Hawks, Sturridge. Ricky Forsyth up from the back also for Derby. Some uh, good defending to be done here for South End. A flicked on! And Sturridge hit the post and it went behind. Well, he's looked very comfortable. Two occasions he's been on the ball. One where he moved in and hit a good left foot shot in and there he got ahead of all the defenders. Flicked in the header. And was very unlucky indeed, Dean Sturridge. Just 21 years old. And they're hoping he can stay fit this season. He had real problems with uh, knee ligaments and hamstring trouble last season. Thompson chasing, but Short held him up. Edwards with a header. Good competitive game and a little goal movement at both ends. Sturridge again, who looks a real handful at the moment. It's easy for uh, Sanson from Carsley. Just looking it wide for Willis. It's a good ball played in there towards Griddlet. Forsyth, all left foot, finds Harks. Hodge, also all left foot, but finding Thompson. Bringing Willis into the play, Thompson keeping it going. Griddlet's in there too, Hodge gets in there, and in the end, Derby get it away to Harks. And now to Pembridge. Williams. Hone with a header. A little crash there which leaves Pembridge on the ground. A clash of heads as they were both, at least a clash as they were both jumping for that. Had a tough old week as Mark Pembridge, hasn't he? He's involved in that Welsh game in Moldova. Flight delayed, horrible result. He's got an extra day's rest for most of the players. But he took a real bang there as he fell on a fairly hard surface. We've had so little rain, a little bit overnight, but not much. And Derby looking to their two subs there, Simpson and Wassell. Taylor, the South End manager, who's got Theo Foley alongside him as the assistant manager. There's Theo. It's a good combination, that, you know. Yes, it is. I always think uh, a little bit of experience with a slightly younger manager is a very good thing, and uh, Theo is very shrewd and sensible, and he knows the game inside out. And I think what they've done at South End is, is rather clever. They started off a bit sketchily, and they quickly made a decision. They changed two or three personnel. They brought a steadying influence in Ronnie Whelan. Not unlike uh, Derby with uh, Gordon Cowans, I would hope to see some excellent passing by the two of them here today. They've both got the ability to slow a game down, which is so important sometimes when the game gets frantic. Henry looks to be in a good deal of trouble there. An old player of yours, of course, at Newton. Yeah, well, he's a hardy player, he's a tough player. In fact, he can be a nasty little player at times in, in the best sense of the world, but he's got a bang in the mouth, and um, I'm sure that will just mean him going off for a few minutes, seeing the club doctor, and uh, I'm sure he'll want to come back. He might have got a shoulder problem as well. He's certainly got a crack in the mouth. And Derby have got a free kick. Paul Williams will take it. Willis tried to get there but couldn't reach it. Flicked on by Forsyth. And uh, Sanson challenged hard by Carsley. But a good experienced keeper. Held it. Finds Chris Powell. Cut out there by Hodge. But here's Otto. Oh, that looked to be a foul. But uh, oh, he had him too. Challenges beautifully there, did Otto. And whips in the cross. Short getting it away. Helped by Williams. Up to Sturridge. And now Cowens. Keith Dublin. Well, that's the bit of invention and excitement that crowds love. A player prepared to take people on. 
Just needed a little bit more with the cross. But he's such a danger, Otto, if he's in the mood. And he wasn't looking for the free kick, was he? he was uh, His one thought was to get to that guy line if he could. Yeah, super point. Absolutely. He could have easily fell. In doing so, he would have possibly got to play a book. Peter Taylor will tell you that he's been so professional in his whole attitude this season. I think maybe uh, it hasn't really always been the case, but he has now. Look at that, that's superb athleticism. And it just needed a good cross at the finish. But they reckon he's only had two sort of half reasonable games this season. The rest, he's been absolutely outstanding. And we understand that Pembridge has got a touch of concussion. Sturridge chasing, noticeable that there are two South End players around him and they claim there was a little bit of shoving on Sturridge there, giving Derby the free kick. And have gained some confidence, uh, that young man with this start, he's, uh, he's done very well, he's looked bright, there was one for obstruction, a few weeks ago he wouldn't have even envisaged a place in the team, he had Johnson, Gabardini, Kitson now away at Newcastle as pairings. And then there's a young boy called Stallard who did very, very well for Fulham yesterday. Got a hat trick, yes. So, um, Pembridge back on again, David. Opportunity knocks for Sturridge and Pembridge back. Oh, Pembridge is back. <laughs> He's got a nasty cut in his mouth and a bit of concussion. Downs and Pembridge over this free kick. Put it away. I think Southend can be afford to be adventurous from the back when they get the ball, really. With Sturridge almost a, a lone striker, really, and Derby filling the midfield areas. It's important that Hone and Powell certainly start trying to get forward from the fullback positions. They mustn't sit too deep. They must give Regis and Thompson as much support and must try and get balls into the box because they can score goals. Paul Sansom and uh, Pembroke is going off again for some further treatment. And I think they're going to make a substitution. I think it's Paul Simpson coming on. Yeah, I'm sure Simpson will play wide on the left now. Hodgie will be topped in. Hodgie will enjoy that more. He doesn't really like being trapped on the touchline. But um, Simpson's got trickery and pace wide. And has a point to make. Up goes Dublin. Simpson has a point to make, you said? Yes, he has really. Right. He's often sacrificed away from home, as often wingers are, uh, to get a more um, compact type of system. Uh, plays most of his games at home, but he hasn't had much opportunity this season. And we know he's got a lot of talent, both at Manchester City and Oxford. He has got talent. Harry Charles with the throw. Chris Powell. to Forsyth, knocked forward again to Sturridge Edwards got his challenge in there Hone just playing it back to Sansom Willis winning it in the air, he's done some good work already down that right hand side Roger Willis there's Harry Hone getting it long towards Regis, Williams getting it away Sturridge, Harps, and now Cowans just teasing it forward again. Dublin there to Chris Powell, his captain. Otto. It's a little buzz every time he gets the ball. Regis picking up uh, Mark Home. the shots that provides Derby with a goal kick lovely clean little pass by Whelan in that build up there but it was Otto who began the 
tempo by developing this attack on the left and going quickly with the ball. It can really unbalance defenders once forwards decide to go forward quickly with the ball. Adam Taylor, Derby's player of the year last season. saying that twice in the last three seasons South End have done the double over Derby they certainly did it last year with a 3-1 win at the baseball ground and a 4-3 win here on the last day of the season Ricky Otto scored on both occasions and so did Paul Simpson Thompson there's a free kick that's gone South End's way the foul by Williams on Willis Whelan behind this, Chris Powell behind this, Cohn's gone into the box, they've left just Keith Dublin at the back. Powell and Whelan in conversation, might be a little touch for Powell, for Whelan, I don't know. Well, it might be Ricky Otto. Yeah, it's going to be Otto who, in fact, will make the strike, I imagine. There he goes, but hits it straight at Hodge. Back to Dublin, being attacked by Hodge. Edwards, it's done well, his strength carried him through, riddle it. Willis. Southend were pushing bodies into the box there. They need to get players forward, particularly when they get the ball wide. Otto can cross early and accurately. And on the right-hand side there, Gridlet spread the ball well. And they just need to get players forward more. I think they could put Derby under some pressure here and they could really isolate uh, Sturridge up the front. time a few weeks back even with falling for his head they always do when you get one or two bad results but he had a very good September at Derby County Watford another improving side went there I think last week and got a draw at the baseball ground Sanson, close on 300 league games here, following over 150 for Millwall. Regis, such a good target man, Dave Regis. Thompson's in the middle there, so too was Craig Short. Whelan didn't quite get to it, Harks now coming away with pace for Derby County. Sturridge is up alongside him, Simpson's racing in there too, and some good defensive play there by Mark Hall, excellent play indeed. Hocks it forward, Whelan to griddle it. Thompson. And Hodge gets it back. Well, that was inches away from a very good counter-attack by Southend there. Good defensive play by Hone and then a nice clever ball by Whelan that once again set them off. I think they've really got to push Otto a little bit wider to stretch Derby, possibly Willis a little bit wider too. I think they can afford to do that, to stretch this Derby five-man uh, midfield. Parks, Sturridge, Howard. 
trying to turn away from uh, Parsley. Home. Well, Thompson's going to chase here. Played in quickly by Willis towards Regis. I think it's fair to say there's quite a little bit of a win now, Brian, and it's playing a few tricks. Even more important now for the players to get the ball down and pass the ball because it's a beautiful surface, but it is windy and some of the balls in the air, the longer balls, are just beginning to waver and uh, they're hard to judge. That ball over the top there for Thompson, looked at first as though it was a defender's ball, all of a sudden Thompson's away. Taylor with the kick. Thompson. Home gets it back to Sansom. Home again with a header. A little flick on by Thompson. Regis chasing. Short's right with him. Otto's available here on the left. And Whelan has spotted him. Good ball. Now Ricky Otto taking on Gary Charles. There's a good cross coming in. Regis aiming for this one. Taylor got it and lost it. And it was Hodge who just nicked it away to Simpson for Derby County. It was chasing at the other end under pressure from Sturridge. It's a word on the touchline with Matt Lorenzo. That's why I word first about Mark Pembridge. He could uh, take any one of three injuries is the reason for his uh, removal from the game. Uh, he had a cut mouth, he had a spot of concussion, uh, but he actually went uh, because of a knee strain. Just had a word with Theo Foley, the assistant manager at Southend. Uh, he's worried that uh, Derby are just sitting back and may well catch his side on the break. Here's Sturridge, he's offside. Thank you, Matt. Well, we saw in that previous attack, uh, Whelan um, spreading the ball out to possibly the match winner or potential match winner, Otto. I think you've got to use him, you've got to get the ball out to his feet. He's obviously got the ability to go past Charles and to get to good positions. Here's Whelan again on the ball. Yeah, and what was interesting, his first look was out to the left to see where Otto was. Yeah. But in the end, decided to play it forward for Gridlet. Simpson. Whelan versus Hodge. They'd have had a few battles over the years, wouldn't they, in the midfield? Indeed. There's a real quality on the field. Whelan. Came to handball. Pretty cool, he didn't want to know. Sturridge gets the chance. Carsley's well forward. Harks is supporting him too. Here's John Harks. Whelan. Spreading it wide again. This time to Willis. Roger Willis now. Spreading it wide again. This time to Chris Powell as captain. Number three, Chris Powell. The uh, South End fans will be pleased to know that he has agreed a new two-year contract, which Peter Taylor hopes he's going to sign after this match. Chris Powell, the number three and captain of South End, comes off Dublin. Yeah, Chris Powell, a little spell with Crystal Palace. But, uh, over 200 league games here and a real quality fullback. In fact, I think one or two premiership sides were looking at him. And I think a lot of people are surprised that somebody didn't take him, but uh, that's to South End's benefit. And across the face of the goal, it was Ricky Otto, in fact, who won the first header. Surprised that a, a top club didn't come in fact and, uh, and have a grab at him. Played very well last season. He exercised his right under freedom of contract, but I think as uh, all sensible players should, you know, he's had long enough to find another club. No one's come in or the club haven't uh, been able to agree with another club. And uh, three months or four months into the season, I think he should be looking to sign a new contract. And here's Thompson. Thompson. Otto will take it up. side of the boot there, Thompson again, took that nicely on his chest. I've not seen him before, Dave, have you seen much of this fellow Andy Thompson? No, it's a long story, Brian, we had someone at the same game in Queen of the South last year, uh, one of our staff, 
uh, when he played. Um, I know that Peter Taylor and Colin Murphy, who's the director of football here, went up to Scotland to see him two or three times. His record in Scotland was superb. The Queen of the South, as a 17, 18 year old boy, he started scoring goals and he kept scoring. Here's Willis. Harry Charles couldn't break it on the end of that one. Otto again turning it in. Taylor behind it as Gribble it came in there and there was an elbow flying there. So carry on with the story. So you were there and South End yes, were there. And a, lot of, and a lot of clubs that were there. And of course a lot of Scottish clubs looked and no one took the chance. There's a 22 year old coming to England. South End took the chance. I believe they paid something like 200 with a further 50 to pay later on. And so it looked sensible business after the marvellous success that they had with that previous front player, a man called Stanley. Stanley Collimore. Well, he scored three in the last four games as young uh, Andy Thompson. Different type of player, of course, uh, not got the pace. Here he is again. Neat, tidy, and a good finisher. Whelan. Thompson. Regis. Posted here for Powell. Feel South End are beginning to come more into the game territorially. They're beginning to play in the derby half a little bit. Derby going to have to work hard to get the ball out to make openings. Harry Charles. Otto, once Lake Norient. Another point about Thompson, of course, Brian, is that in Scotland, in the first and the second division, there's a lot of part-time players. Well, he was a part-timer. He was. And um, coming into full-time football, we expect it to him to take time to settle, but the, once the, the adjustment's made, then they quite clearly have a player. Gary Charles with a throw, Whelan with a header clear, up towards Thompson. just needs to beef up a little bit to get a little stronger but they feel he's improving all the time coming from part-time to full-time getting to grips with the full-time training and all of that entails just caught offside there End. Yeah, complacency there, and uh, Hodgie doesn't give up, and when he nicked it across, it took a nasty deflection. Here we see it again. Just a second's hesitancy. It was uh, spiralled up off the South End player, and of course, it looks as though he's got all the time in the world. It was on his wrong side. I said earlier on he favours his right side. That was his left one. He wanted it in the roof of the net, not the roof of the stand. Thompson bringing Willis into the play, but it's a goal kick for Derby. with a player down, Dave Regis. That was the first clear chance of the game, I suppose, um, Brian. It's, um, it's stuttering at the moment. It wants someone to get hold of the ball and start passing the ball around, get some possession going. Conditions aren't easy. Still some good movement in it, though, David. Yeah? Yes, there's some good movement in it, particularly when they get down this left side. You've just got the feeling that 
Powell and Otto have the ability to impose themselves on the right side of this Derby team. And of course, at the moment, Gary Charles is sitting, keeping his shape, so is Forsyth on the other side. And uh, really, a goal, of course, will change it. We need a goal. A goal would change it, and the shape changes then as teams have to take chances to get back in the game. But at the moment, it's very much a... Oh, no, that's, a that's some cut on uh, the top of Dave Regis's head. Sorry to interrupt you, David. Yeah, that's, that's the old Vaseline there. Oh, yeah. oh, my goodness, yes. Now, I just wonder whether the ref might well say, I think you better go off and uh, let somebody have a look at that. But the physio obviously knows what he's about. Well, he's... Um... He's a tough player, Regis. He's a strong player. One of the old Barnet uh, brigade, right. of course. Well, Steve Perriman and Ozzy there. Now, they're not here just to take the afternoon air at the seaside. Any conjecture from you, uh, David? No. Oh, here's Thompson. Regis is waiting in the middle, but couldn't pull it back. Well, they can afford a few whelks, I think, if they want to go down the front afterwards, but um, very difficult. You never know what type of player they're looking for or where they may see a reason to... Uh, but it's possibly just a check on, on uh, someone's form. I'd have thought Powell might have come into their thoughts. There was some talk about West Ham being interested in uh, Chris Powell at one point earlier this season. He's certainly got quality about him. Here's Wheeler. Now here's Powell. Wheeler with a little chip and a good one too. Regis battling away with that head injury of his as Cowens gets it back. That's a good jump by Dublin. Charles. Spurs have done business with uh, South End before, haven't they? Have indeed. Austin, Edinburgh. They like fullbacks, you see. Mm. It must be the air, Brian. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this. Cohen. Get up, guys! Not quite far enough to find Otto. Whelan just trying to keep it going. Finds Powell again. Simpson. I can't help feeling if Derby would be a bit more ambitious they may get a little bit more joy. I can't help feeling that it's very hard for an inexperienced player like Story to play up front on his own. I know they've got problems with teams, uh, team selection because of absence of players but at the moment John Hawks is possibly the nearest to him in general play but he's too deep and therefore if they can't work the ball out with short passes and it's not that easy they've got to play that type of ball and it's too long and the man's isolated and they can, they've only got one man to catch offside, which they've just done there. I just feel Hawks, he's, he's looking now at, uh, at Carsley and he's saying, uh, what do you want me to do? I think he should just play a little bit further up. That would push Whelan possibly a little bit further back, who's marking him. Derby at the moment, I feel they don't need to be so deep. The referee, in fact, has stopped play. He wants to have another look, and I'm not surprised at uh, Dave Regis. Uh, I, as I was saying a moment ago, I would have thought, certainly I think in European games, I think they are so... Uh, wary of head injuries that uh, I think they would have insisted straight away that he went off and had some uh, some treatment so Dave Regis off as you can see that is a pretty severe head wound and so South End just at the moment down to 10 That's a free kick to Derby County with about eight minutes in the first half left Flicked off Cowens actually and fell obligingly for Otto. Lovely ball there. 
can Thompson get on the end of it? Almost made it, but Taylor anticipated that well. David? Super pass, real quality that. It came with a bit of backspin as it went over the shoulder there, I think it was of Williams, and didn't Taylor anticipate it well? It was a splendid save, that. leaving the throw for Gary Charles been on the score sheet a couple of times this season as uh, Gary you know, his professional career he's only scored four so it's a season to remember so far for him there's his throw Otto again just hitting it forward Forsyth for that left boot getting it clear Powell getting up above Carsley Wheelan on the chase now being hustled by Cowens, they'd have had a few battles too in the past and Cowens won this one and he's got Hawks up ahead of him and Sturridge up ahead of him he plays it now for Hawks Simpson they might still make something of it they might still make something of it Hawks knocking it back but you feel in a way their best chance is gone Hawks again trying to get it across goes behind for the corner no goal kick well a smile from the American John Harks but really an excellent chance that you feel that uh, he failed he delayed his shot for some reason David yeah there's a lovely shot in the middle of the field there Cowens and Wheeling competing Cowens won the day and as he strode through he fashioned a lovely ball it really was clever and Harks' first touch let him down having gone wide he then played quite a good ball into the box but it was a chance Wheeler sideways nod there to Willis comes back to Willis again and now to Powell now Wits Carsley Wheeler again up to Gridley turn nicely but in comes Short he's got Sturridge up ahead of him here's Simpson coming in down the left flank and Short continued his run that could be a problem but he just oh a great shot and a super save Great shot by Steve Hodge and the second fine save in this game we've had from 33-year-old Paul Sansom. Hodge hit this a really powerful volley. Yes! It's gone over. That's a goal kick and maybe we can see the, the Hodge volley. It's certainly worth seeing and also uh, Sammy Sansom's save at the end of it. got a feel for goals uh, as Hodgie, he had plenty of room to come on to it, but he, lovely timing, lovely sweet contact. balances defenders so easily. Cowens. Williams. Forsyth. Sturridge. To Cowens. Chip forward again. Brutal it. 
free kick to South End. Coming towards the half time interval now inside the last five minutes of, I hope you'll agree, an entertaining first half. Well, here's Thompson, a touch on. Well, that was a really good chance, Brian. I don't think he realised, with superbly quick thinking with a quick free kick, but I don't think Thompson realised the time he had. Parks playing it in. It says a lot for him, actually, that his mind was just that little bit quicker than anybody else's when that free kick was being taken. I you know he didn't finish it off as you would have wanted him to, David, but... Uh, Oh, he was alert. Oh, he was yeah, indeed. he was alert. Regis, we understand, is having stitches in that head wound. Mark Home. Andy Edwards planting it forward. Thompson again. Here's Forsyth. Sturridge. Carsley's in the middle, Simpson, Edwards, gets it clear, Williams, to Charles, Hodge had gone right in there and stayed in there, but Southend looked very secure there, finding Whelan, finding Mark Cohn, Whelan again, Trying to bypass Ronnie Whelan, slipping it wide to Paul Simpson. He just, I can see, uh, looking as though he wants to come on for the last couple of minutes of the first half. Comes. Oh, tied it up. Stitches, I would have thought. Quite a few in that head wound. Edwards. Holding up well. Home. Brilliant. Down the line. And Regis quickly back in the action. Thompson in the middle. Ricky Otto's coming up quick as well. Can Regis get it across? No, but he gets a corner. Always feel Southend have some kind of opportunities at corners. They've got a lot of big players. I would say that overall they're a bigger side than Derby. They've got more big men to cope with. Well, Willis and Regis are in there now. And uh, Andy Edwards up, number five. And Mark Home. Chris Powell with the corner. And they've all ticked away to the edge. And now they're all turning and swooping back in again. Now what's going to happen here? Well, it might come yet. And in the end, uh, Willis couldn't quite put a finishing touch to it. But an interesting little move on that corner there, David, the way the all five of them trotted away out to the edge of the six yard and then suddenly flew back in there waiting for that corner to come in. And very nearly caught Derby there. It's, it's clever, you need movement, you need something a little bit different. Sometimes teams mark areas and you just have to disturb them. You could see the Derby players looking and thinking, hey, what's going on here? I was um, speaking to Theo Foley before the game and Danny Greaves... He was probably speaking to you, mind you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Danny Greaves was saying that he tried a free kick yesterday in the uh, youth team. Just have a look now for... No, yes, go on. He tried a free kick in the youth team, which Theo Foley had, uh, had put to him, and he said it, it, it worked a treat. Did you yes. score from it? Well, almost. <laughs> When you've got a few six-footers, yes. you need to work hard at your yes. set-pieces. I'll tell you one thing that's impressed me also, I don't know whether it has you in this first half, but Ronnie Whelan has won just about everything, as I said, that you could possibly win at Liverpool. But his appetite coming down here, and here he is on the ball again now, seems totally undiminished here in the uh, first division of the Ensley League. I think it proves the point there, Brian, it doesn't matter it if you, again. you get a pound or a thousand pound, it's your attitude. That's right. Here's Thompson, will he try a shot? He has! Good save! <laughs> Throw to South End. Well, Mark 
Tay, Martin Taylor did well there. He, uh, it was a powerful shot from Andy Thompson and a good way to finish a quite rousing first half, which nonetheless finishes goalless. But good movement, good play, good experience, some nice skills from both sides. But at half-time here at Roots Hall on the Essex coast, South End United nil, Derby County nil. Hey, cop the kit, lads, cop the kit. Da 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 da. da. The washing machine's been mended. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. Pacific, the airline that is the heart of Asia. If you're looking for a used car, let your Rover dealer look for you. He has immediate access to over 5,000 quality used Rovers. Not only will he find precisely the one you want, but he can ensure it's been checked and approved by a specialist Rover inspector before you take delivery. At Rover Dealers, we care enough to take all the worry out of acquiring a used car. Well, nearly all. Our system is ready. Our people are in place. UPS announces a guarantee of truly global proportions. Guaranteed express delivery. On time, every time to thousands of cities worldwide, or your money back. But you don't need to hear all that. George, I got your package right on time. That's all you need to hear. The Worldwide Express Guarantee from UPS. As sure as taking it there yourself. Mm. Bulgarian Cabernet Sauvignon? Bulgarian? Mmm, excellent. But, 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 tell me. Not more? <sighs> Bulgarian wine, fantastic. Imagine video like you see in the movies. Graphics you want to reach out and touch. Numbers that fall into place instantly. So things go faster at work, learning's more fun, and games are far more realistic. It's amazing what you can do with an Intel Pentium processor. There's never been a card quite like the Shell Smart Card. It lets you pick up gifts from Shell service stations and save for items from our catalogue, including tapes and CDs. You can also donate money to charities, get UCI cinema tickets, or even collect air miles. Ask at your local Shell service station. Get smart, get the card. Temp agency said I'd soon get into the swing of things. <laughs> Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. So no goals so far at Roots Hall, South End against Derby County. The game stuttered along, quite a few incidents as well. David, what do you make of it so far? Well, I just think, uh, you know, they've got a potential match winner in Ricky Otto, and I think we've seen a couple of incidents there. If we can get, they got the ball out to him, it could cause a lot more problems that... Uh, Derby have set their stall out to play a particular brand and I think what's happening, both defences are restricting size to having shots 
from a fair way out. And uh, I suppose if you wanted to just nick a point, that's the way to do it. I think it'd be, I'd like to see a bit more adventure somewhere yeah, along the line. Yeah, it's a shame we haven't, uh, haven't had a goal because the, the game needs a goal to open it up. A lot of quality on the pitch. Steve Hodge in particular, and he produced a, a cracking volley here, David, didn't he? Yes, I mean, it's the first time, if you look now, it's where the centre-half's gone up. He's gone all the way through and they've had to defend it. And all of a sudden the balls fell down into the midfield. But I can't see that happening a lot. Done well. He's done a marvellous save there, Sammy. And now Andy Thompson at the other end. Actually, it's, sorry, it's, it's, it's the same one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Webby, that's... Uh... But like, he's got back there, he's edited it out. And he's come on to it. It's terrific here, Hodge, really. I mean, it's, it's the sort of shot that he loves to go for. Tremendous save. Just right, this is Andy end. Thompson, right at the end of, of the half. And he's looked lively, yes, hasn't yes. he? No, he, I mean, he's, he's done well. I mean, done, done particularly well when he lost his teammate there, Regis, for a few minutes. But uh, they, they'll come on. This is a guy that really could probably change, make all the difference. It, he skips past these, he was going for a bunch of bluebells. Look, he goes past another one in a minute. There he, he stands goes. up so well here, doesn't he? There's three he having rides, a go at him. He rides it ever so well, and, and he gets a crossing as well. I mean, this is, uh, you know, if they should learn from that, surely, to get, get that out to him, and maybe they'll have a match winner. Sure. It'd be nice to see Ricky Otto get a bit more of the ball in the second half, eh? I should think he will do. Let's hope so. No goals so far then at South End, but they have had goals at Burnden Park, the Lancashire Derby there, Bolton against Oldham. Let's call in Rob Palmer. Only one place difference between these two clubs, Oldham in 10th, Bolton Wanderers in 11th. So uh, there'll be plenty to play for. The winners could go sixth. It's Lee going through for Sue Patalainen and the goal to the Finn. The celebrations like that, you could call him the flying fit. Schnickers. Lee again. Pointed, backpedalling. Lee sends him, and that's a lovely, lovely, lovely goal. <laughs> See why a bit of repetition on that one. 2 0 then at uh, Burnden Park. No goals though at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United against Barnsley. And let's hope for goals in the second half when we return to Roots Hall. No goals at half time there. South End against Derby. See you in a couple of minutes. Let's see your mascara's all kicked there. Get your lashes tinted before the next match. Okay. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. If you're six foot. As I am. Next time you fly in business class, try this simple test. If your toes touch the seat in front, you're on the wrong plane. Gentlemen, outside of 5,000 Mexicans, while we are down to a mere 89, 88 men, things would seem hopeless. Well, maybe they'd look better after breakfast. How about hog chitlins and beans? 88 times! Yeah! We're out of hog chitlins. We got Weedabix. Weedabix? 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 We gotta fight 5,000 Mexicans. 4,000! 3,000! 2,000! Have you had your Weedabix? Curved surfaces create reflections. Curved glass creates distortions. Sony create the super flat, super Trinitron. The world's flattest tube, Sony's finest picture. people do to get their hands on my 20 grand but all you have to do is listen to 95.8 capital fm at 8 15 tomorrow morning i'll call out a birthday if it matches yours you could win 20,000 pounds 
Back in the 70s, I must have listened to this record at least 5,128 times, to the point where if I have to listen to it one more time, I think my head's going to blow up. I hate it. I hate the 70s. I hate nostalgia. I hate clogs. I hate lava lamps. I hate burnt sienna corduroy bell bottoms. But most of all, I hate sugar sugar. This, I don't hate. Holston pills, because it's brewed twice so that all the sugar turns to alcohol. That's no sugar, no honey honey, and totally candy girl free. Whoops. There's hair, and there's hair with style. To get it, you need the right elements. Salon Selectives. Interlocking formulas you put together to build in style step by step by step. To go beyond hair that's just there. To hair with style. Salon Selectives. The elements of style. There's a manufacturing company that is the 33rd biggest in the world and they're about to launch a car combining the anti-corrosion expertise they've learned from building oil tankers with the passenger comfort they've learned from building coaches with the strength they've learned from building heavy machinery with the aerodynamics and reliability they've learned from building aircraft and aircraft components with state-of-the-art technology learned from building spacecraft and this company is called Deu. Day who? Day who, the biggest car company you've never heard of. Right. If the first class seat, the legroom, and the chauffeurs don't impress you, there's always the frequent flyer scheme. Right, this is double sided safe from the DIY shops, so go for a header and run in their goal. Good luck. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. Well, again, no goals on the Sunday match so far. Plenty of talking points, though, in that game at South End. Uh, not least a couple of head injuries that were picked up there. One for Pembridge, the Derby player, who had to go off. And the second one for Dave Regis. Now, David, you feel that there are one or two more players getting banged on the head this season. Why is that? Well, I think it's likely to happen even more so, I think, because everyone's clamping down so hard on the, supposedly just the elbow. But I think a lot of players all throughout time have always put up their arm for a bit of protection as much as, like, elbowing somebody. So therefore, you're going to bound to have the fellas not putting their arms up. They're going to clash heads a lot more. And I think over the coming months and even years, you're going to see lots more incidents like that where the old Vaseline companies are going to make a fortune. Poor old Dave Reese has had to go off and, and get that stitched up and, and he's come back late in the half. But you're saying that, uh, that you've had an edict round at Brentford that, that players shouldn't be treated on the pitch. Yes, we've had a redirective this week from the FA to, to remind us all that, you know, that from FIFA is that players are only be allowed to uh, be diagnosed the treatment on the pitch and to actually be treated off the pitch but you know you can see it there how can you do that with someone with a head injury you know it's a uh, little boy Pembridge he had a hat-trick of injuries all in one clash you know what do you do there you get him off and then you get him back on again it could uh, cause all sorts of problems mm. but as a manager you put someone back on at your peril it's very dangerous isn't it David it is with head injuries it's very much so with head injuries that's where the old physios have got to be worth their sort now OK, let's uh, cross back to South End and uh, Theo Foley, old pal of ours on this programme, now grafting for South End, is with Matt Lorenzo. Theo, it looks as though things are starting to go your way towards the end of that first half. Would you go along with that? Yes, uh, I would indeed. We didn't really want the whistle to come. To be fair, Derby have sat back, Matthew, and defended quite well. They've had a couple of breaks. We've been a little bit cautious, I think. We could really do with opening it up just a little bit more, as we did in a lot of stages of the game. I must just mention two observers in the director's box, Steve Perryman and Ozzy Ardiles. When I asked them what they were doing here, they said they were enjoying the sea air and looking at their old mate Peter Taylor. Would well, you agree with that? Well, I would really. I think maybe they both wanted to get out of the way, and it's nice for them to come down here and watch this game. Everybody assumes they've come to watch players. Of course, that's part of the job, and they like to be keep abreast of the things. It's nice to see them here. It's a nice place to come anyway, even on a Sunday. Anyway, it's a compliment to the way things are coming together here. Well, I think it is. I think that we've done very, very well here. We just badly need now to make sure we don't get caught on the break and make it doubly certain that we don't fall for that sucker punch. We'll get a goal, I'm sure of that. OK, Theo, let's rejoin our match commentators. David Pleat, but first, here's Brian Moore. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Actually, the way these rumours go around a football ground the way they do, the uh, feeling is that they might even be watching Ronnie Whelan. Do you think that's a possibility? Well, he's, um, he's the type of player who knows the game. He certainly adds composure to a midfield. And he certainly knows how to hold his ground, which is very important. Some players fly around. He knows how to play steadily and sensibly. And um, 
who and knows. At, and, at, and at 33, here he is on the ball again now, and at 33, he's still got plenty of football left in him. Yes, some of the best players in the Enzi League are the 35, 36-year-olds who uh, know when to run and where to run. Well, that's just conjecture, but it's nice to see Ozzy and Steve here at any rate. Hope they're enjoying it, hope you are too. It's nil-nil here, and here's Derby County. With young, uh, young Lee Carsley. Dublin. Doesn't let much get past him. Whelan gets it back to Sansom. Carsley again. his career at Crystal Palace so was released by them when he was 20 and then came here from Welling the club that have really uh, produced one or two very good players in their time Andy Townsend went of course through the Welling club it's Thompson we're looking at now there's Hone going for that one and they've been impressed by him since he uh, slotted into this right back position and there he is very conveniently again as we're talking about him here's Ronnie Whelan up forward to Ricky Otto Willis Whelan pumping it forward Otto just keeping it in play or at least it uh, just kept in play for him but Hodge just knocking it away Simpson gets it forward towards Sturridge Thompson couldn't quite arrive quickly enough and for size trusty left boot gets it clear for Derby County one gets the impression that if we were a fly on the wall in the two dressing rooms they were both saying similar things let's push a little bit more forward let's try and get a little bit more width and let's try and raise the tempo a shade and I think that looks as though it's going to happen Mark Hone again 25 years old cost uh, south end here is number two 25,000 pounds from willing with another 25,000 and he's played 50 games peter taylor says that's the best deal i've ever done he's played so well at right back since he joined us <laughs> throw to derby thank you for scythe Willis with the header. Great short. Oh, he's given it away badly to Ricky Otto. Now, will Otto take on Charles? Here's his shot. Probably yes, it just came off for Gary Charles. It'll be a corner for South End. There was a classic case of a defender not knowing his limitations there. Craig Short starts coming out with the ball. Did it once in the first half, he stopped dribbling the ball out, he's not sure where he's going to, and in the end he gives a dreadful pass. You know, all the defenders have to do is to play it simply and early, and so the midfield players know that they're going to receive it quickly. Freeman with the corner. Good catch. Only Sturridge up. Misdirected header by Keith Dublin. And that's the wind playing tricks again in the air. It's those big high balls that are so difficult to judge. Cold and breezy up here and now a little perch. And it is a little perch. Willis. A little bit of acceleration and a good ball into the path of Otto. Thompson's gone one way. And Otto's played a lovely ball for him. Can he get there? No. Some good keeping again. But some very skillful work, full of guile there by Ricky Otto. And a bit of pace from this young Scottish uh, forward as well. But Otto really opened the up there. Willis also did well at the start of that move. Tagged out on the right touchline, bringing the ball in. There's Otto. 
And what about this for a pass? Yeah, there. fine, fine pass. An excellent goalkeeping. That's the second time in the game that Martin Taylor has anticipated, come off his line quickly and really spread himself in wonderful style and got it with both hands. Thompson again, finding Willis. Grimlick's gone forward. But Hodge gets it away. Pass it left here too firmly though for Simpson. And the flag was up for an offside. Can only have been against Sturridge, surely. Not Simpson. Five stitches, we understand. And he's carrying a sponge just in case there's any blood still oozing between those stitches. Dave Regis, Billy Whelan, a nice little change of pace and direction there. Plays it for Gridley, plays it now for Regis again. Williams going with him. Forsyth getting it away. Willis again. Seems to be in the middle of everything now. As Whelan plays it in again. Short gets this one clear. Forsyth gets it away. Here's Willis again. This time it's with Hone. Playing a good ball now for Regis. But again, Taylor's there. Regis went for him, and Taylor in trouble, Regis in trouble. Two uh, professionals going in a real wholehearted way for that single ball. And I, I think we've got a tragedy here. I've got a feeling we might have a break here. He's done brilliantly again as the goalkeeper. He's read that well. It was a lovely pass through to Regis. He's caught his leg. I think the leg's trapped under his body. They are calling for a stretcher. And I think they knew straight away. Here we see it again. Williams come, comes in, tries Oof. to get there. And it's the right, the lead leg that has caught Taylor. So the doctor is on. He was doing excellently, I felt, in the Derby goal. He was as safe as houses. Fortunately for Derby, they got a marvellous cover in Steve Sutton, an experienced cover. The doctor is on the field. Gordon Guthrie there, the experienced Derby physiotherapist, but uh, the sign will be if they strap his legs together. But he certainly will take no further part in the game. And he did nothing wrong. Read everything particularly well. And did you feel Regis was uh, was going for the ball and had the right to go for the ball? I mean, it was a Absolutely a for sure. I think when yeah. the ball was first, first played through, I think Regis there was the... Uh, a favourite. Here we see it again. You see Regis going down. It's uh, it's in between the two of them, really. I certainly don't think. And knowing Dave Regis, although he's a he's a big, strong, many would say, not a aggressive type for his for his uh, height and, and strength. He's, he's more of a gentle giant. But um, I don't think there was anything malicious in there. Well, he's. You can see the number nine as concerned as anybody, naturally enough. So Steve Sutton will come on. Be interesting to know what the percentage uh, uh, is of goalkeepers who are having to come on with this new rule of substitutions. I was only seeing Steve Sutton in the tunnel today thinking what a splendid goalkeeper he is to spend this season yes. sitting on the touchline. Well, sadly, now it looks as though he might get a few weeks. There's a running goal now. So, where were we? Corner so kick. Corner to Southend. Uh, I was sporting. Yeah. Uh, Ricky was uh, with the ball in the corner, present there, and just kicked it away for the goal kick because uh, it's in the sensible way of starting after the unfortunate uh, injury to Martin Taylor. So Steve Sutton, long spell of course as Nottingham Forest mainstream goalkeeper. Simpson, Harks will seek to keep that in play, succeeds in doing so. Well, 
Forsyth crossing it in. Oh, they allowed Carsley to come in. Casual good play. defending there actually by South End. It's casual play by Powell. Carsley came across on the diagonal from the other side when Forsyth goes to play it in. There you see them just for a second hesitancy as Carsley came in and got his feet wrong as he hit it with his left foot. And actually right-sided player. I think he made his debut a couple of weeks ago at Swindon in the away game when he played very well. Darren Wassell coming on. taking uh, Paul Simpson off, one substitute goes off and another one comes on, that doesn't happen very often but uh, Darren Russell of course is a swift and experienced defender, central defender so what do you think that means, will they put maybe Paul Williams up into the midfield? Well uh, I'm fascinated by that one, I, I don't think Simpson's had enough of the ball to, to, to fail if, as it were and um, he is an attacker, he is a, a likely scorer or a maker of goals and it has been brought off for a defender. Whether Derby feel at this stage that South End have got the ball by the horns and they're taking the game to them, I don't think they're that much on top. But they are playing at a greater pace than they did in the first half. They are looking more lively. Um, but anyway, there's a forward been sacrificed. Brilliant. First examination on the goalkeeper, Martin Taylor. Looks as though it is a broken leg. gets it away but at the expense of a corner Whelan will take the corner Mark's got there first Sturridge got there too and Powell very competitive indeed there. Gets it for Dublin. Coming towards the quarter of an hour mark of the second half. Still waiting for the first goal here at Brooks Hall. Ricky Otto. Didn't quite run for him. Honestly. With the clearance. A definite break. I regret to inform you that uh, Martin Taylor's had in the shin area of the left leg, and he's now waiting uh, in the dressing room for the ambulance to arrive to take him off to uh, the local hospital. <laughs> Gary Charles with the free kick for Derby County. Shorts up there, but uh, Willis. so it's a free kick to South End United Taylor played here of course South End United and then Crystal Palace and then Tottenham and England of course through to Gridley. Thompson getting it back to Willis. Powell's over on that other side. Here's Powell. In the end, he was stopped by Forsyth. Well, they came all the way back across the field when at first I thought Powell might have an opportunity to get the ball to Otto. It's touched there by Hearn. Leland again. Thompson, Gary Charles there for Derby, Bubble keeping it going, Otto, would like to see him have a run at Charles now, he goes. Oh, another pitch, go 
Won't beat Charles easily on the outside. He's very quick. He gets low to the ground when he turns, Charles. But I'm quite sure that he can get him on his inside. And Otto can go both ways. And I'm sure that there's an opportunity for him. They need to feed him the ball. Interestingly enough, I've got a feeling that Boss has been brought on the field, you know, to stand on the old campaign of Whelan and stop him probbing and probing the, um, the south end attacks. Roy McFarlane, the Derby County manager. Oh, that, that was a stretching stretching. Action. Yes. Hawks, Hodge, Hawks, on towards Sturridge. Regis beaten in the air by Forsyth. Hodge got a touch on it too. Russell. Williams turning away from Thompson. Gets it back to Sutton. Driven by him. Towards Hawks. Dublin gets it clear. Forsyth now. Willis goes down. Free kick. Foul by Vic Forsyth. <laughs> Squared up just for a moment. Forsyth and Riddle it. But so there was no uh, profit in that. Finished with a smile, I'm happy to say, and a free kick for South End United, which Whelan has taken quickly. Thompson in behind them and didn't get a firm touch. When even the even uh, a touch that wasn't a very good one would have probably been enough just to have poked it wide of uh, Steve Sutton. You can see the annoyance in his face. It was a wonderful ball there played by Whelan. Yep. Not such a good ball there from uh, Andy Thompson. Yeah, there's a good relationship between Whelan and Thompson. Whelan will help make Thompson a player. When you're used to the Liverpool way of playing, you're used to people running into positions quickly and looking to receive the ball and being bright. Well, he's shown that a couple of times. He showed it there and he showed it just before half-time on a free kick, uh, David, didn't yeah, he? And his, didn't his he? finishing just let him down. So here's a throw for South End. Powell with it, up goes Regis. Ridley did that too. Willis get there and Sutton just grabbed it first. Here's Hawks. There's Whelan getting didn't quite get the challenge in there on Mossel, but he's buzzing around there. And he's buzzing around again and it falls for Ronnie Whelan. My job to pick the man of the match, but uh, He's been an outstanding player as we done this afternoon. Oh, mine keeps going back to uh, that rumour at half time about Tottenham and Whelan. I mean, he does, he does look in uh, excellent form, doesn't he? You never know what can happen yeah, in football. He's supposed to have signed, they just signed that's a right. two-year contract here. Maybe sign the contract first so that they could then claim some transfer money. But I very much doubt it. He was a free agent, of course, in the summer. That's he wrote right. to many clubs. I watched him play for Millwall Reserves a few weeks ago. Who, Ronnie Weaver? Yes, indeed. Really? Yes, he played midweek for Millwall Reserves and a very, very good reserve game against West Ham United. And our, the rumour was that Millwall were taking him for a month and the uh, South End snatched him. Or maybe Millwall didn't want to pursue it, obviously. Sturridge. Well, Derby, I have to say, slightly disappointing for the um, pre-season favouritism with Wolves and Middlesbrough that they had in the Division 1 betting charts. Wheeler, that's a lovely ball he's played. Regis is off after it. Thompson's waiting in the middle. Griddle is coming up fast. Thompson, he stabbed it wide. Well, the young man's had three chances, and that was a, a, a 
getting tired of saying it in a way. Another super ball from Ronnie Wheeler. Look at him scooping that ball inch perfect into the path of Dave Regis. Great opportunity coming up here. Andy Thompson couldn't quite find the finishing touch. Can't play by Regis as everyone scampered back onto the goal line. He cut it back at an acute angle. And Thompson just didn't get his feet right. It was probably a right-footed effort. He let it run across his body and he didn't quite prepare for the shot. And the thing I like about him is he keeps getting there. There's, there's time to go. There's time to go. He looks as though he might get a goal. Thompson. Yes. He finds space. Forsyth with the throw for Derby. A little under 25 minutes remaining. Here's Thompson. It falls for Otto. the scoreboard at the other end scoreboard incidentally that's only been uh, brought into Roots Hall this very week it used to be in the main shopping high street in South End telling people where to go for their shopping South End have bought it and it's making its debut today Willis up towards Regis Whelan Regis chasing Short is big and strong and not short on experience, but wasn't the best of chances in uh, fairness. Forsyth helped out. Wheeling again onto the left foot. Yes. They're really buzzing around here, home this time, trying to curl one just wide of the Derby County goal. Well, certainly the greater threat from South End, more determination to get players forward. I think they've realised that um, they've got a great opportunity here. I think they could have the 20 minutes of pressure. What Derby have done, in actual fact, is push Paul Williams up the front uh, with, um, with Sturridge to try and give them a little more strength. There's that bender of Hone. Didn't quite get it right. It wasn't quite convincing. Williams. Hone gets it clear. It's stopped by Cowens. Up goes Wassel, up goes Hone again, flicked on this time by Willis and an offside against Regis. The Derby haven't carved a chance for themselves in the second half. No, right at the beginning, Sturridge got away down the right, didn't he, when that hard, low, fast cross across the face of the box, but there was no one there to capitalise, and they certainly haven't had any shots. Edwards. A good capable game at the back again. And never beat Wassel for pace. Whelan playing it in for Thompson. And again, a nice little touch by Thompson. And it ricochets here for home. South end pressing again. Willis just clipping it in there. The Derby defenders lining up. It'll fall for Ricky Otto. And driven off the defender behind for the corner. Still nil-nil though. <laughs> Whelan will take the corner. Two at the near post, three at the near post in fact, and it's Thompson who first to show. Whelan playing it in again, might go anywhere, Willis with a header, and it came off the post. That's his forte, he's a very good springer, he's a good jumper, he likes getting in at that back post from wide positions. Got a deflection of course, there you see him. That was good, good arching of the back and a real thump of the neck muscles there and it was a good effort really, a few inches and Southend I think would have taken a deserved lead. Sutton with the goal kick. Riddlitz. Otto. Inside the last 20 minutes as Otto finds Willis. Stopped by the determination of Forsyth. Kept in play here by 
Mark Cole. Edwards spreading it wide. To Chris Powell. Keith Dublin. Chris Powell again. Hit long. Thompson's onside. The flag has stayed down. Traditionally had quite a strong contingent to, to travel to West Ham from this area. But um, Southend really could do with more people here. The team is deserving of more people, that is for sure. And so is the stadium now. Here they come. Well, they come out to the edge of the box. Whee! Again. But the delivery wasn't good enough. It's Whelan playing it wide for Powell again. Whelan. Made inside for home. Ooh, he picked up Powell. Oh, and a great save by Sutton. Looking to heave that ball into the centre once more. Parsley gets that one away. Whelan, no. And there was Powell showing that he can use his right foot. It was a good ball through. Powell took it with his left foot. As it goes away, there's his right foot. And Steve Sutton spreading himself splendidly. And it's young Steve Hodge who completes the team. He'll nail still. Andy Edwards gets it into touch. Just about 16 to go now. Williams. Driven in, flicked on. And a great save. Once again by Sanson, that time from Carsley. We are saying they hardly had a thing uh, for Sanson to do in the second half. He was a bit chilly, but that would have warmed his hands up as well. It was a beautifully struck uh, shot by Lee Carsley. And plenty of space actually to line up that shot as well. But some super keeping again by Paul Sanson. And gracious applause from Steve Sutton at the other end as uh, really? Sanson made that marvellous save. Whelan with a header. Thompson. 
Hodge gets that one away under a lot of pressure from Dave Regis. Leave to throw. Win and again. Feed in towards Regis. Short and up well above him on that occasion. Sturridge. Congratulations on your extraordinary win yesterday. Well, not extraordinary, a wonderful win yesterday against Middlesbrough. Yeah, it was an effective team performance, Brian. We, it was one of those days where once we went in front, we sensed it and we went for them. And um, I was delighted, and it should give heart to all the other teams in the division. You know that uh, Wolves and Middlesbrough won't run away with it. it it's going to be a real good competition this season. softened up for Middlesbrough because next week they're on the Sunday match again this time at Portsmouth Jim Smith's team will give them a fairly warm welcome I would think before that of course don't forget Manchester United against Barcelona in the Champions League on ITV on Wednesday night 8.20 that starts and it really is a cancel all engagements and uh, get yourself settled down for that one for no trouble and chasing this second first out leaving just a little bit of space Darby at times for this little ball over the top Whelan certainly has dinked a few nice ones in there they've got the pace of Regis Willis has pushed on more this half Regis chasing and Short knew just what he was doing thought for a moment he was going to be put under real pressure by the onrushing Dave Regis but he just ducked his head in got it back safely to Steve Sutton Derby has something like 12 minutes left now to weather this storm. Mark Hurry down the line. Yes. Regis battling. And the free kick given uh, against Dave Regis for the foul on Craig Short. get into a playoff position it's very tight in those middle areas of the Ensley first division certainly plenty of playoff candidates even this early in the season it's going to be Southend's ball and at the 
listen to a word I'm saying. You're busy making notes. I suppose you've got one of these two sides coming up, have you? No, I agree with you, but I think that uh, my mind turns off when people start talking about playoff positions this early because it only increases pressure. I'm only saying what Peter Taylor said. He's, oh. He's given that away to Regis. Forsyth gets it possibly off Regis for a Derby County throw. With 10 minutes left. just looking at, um, at the midfield area there you know when we look at Ronnie Whelan I don't know if I'm anticipating being asked this but it's, it's going to come up soon the man of the match and um, the way he stands back sometimes from the ball to receive the ball he doesn't always run on forward after he plays the ball sometimes he goes for and then just checks back so he can receive the pass again that's the point I made in the first half he knows when to stand still on a football field and if you stand still sometimes you get more touches than the players that run around um, without thinking. Well, here's Gary Charles for Derby. So that's something the Luton players will be learning on the training ground this week, is it some of them? No, complete the reverse of that, we'll have to run around. <laughs> Doubling up, and a foul on him by Paul Williams and a free kick to Southend. I think every, play, every club needs a player who's got that uh, ability to, if you like, survey the play and dictate it from the centre. The old saying is someone to put the foot on the ball. Yeah, that calm and that composure that's needed. Well, Whelan has certainly done that this afternoon for South End United. Hodge gets that one away. Here's Whelan again. Finding Willis with this one. Now home. Available again, Weaver. Plays it for Edwards. And now for Dublin. Riddle it. Trying to get that inside the fullback for Otto to run onto it. Maybe they haven't employed Otto quite enough in this second half. Here's Whelan again. Trying to get it wide here, but I don't think Mark Hill will get to that one. Hodgie he called and Hodgie gets it from the four side. Williams. Sturridge. So a corner for Derby County. Which John Hawks will take. Great short up pose a problem but not when it's played down there although it was short who got on the end of it he need to cause more damage to the uh, scoreboard than he had to uh, Paul Sansom's goal right. that's not how to shoot leaning back caught by surprise with the free kick to the south end Edwards has gone forward now Willis is in there Regis is in there Thompson also in there on the far side Ricky Otto so even with the kick <laughs> towards Edwards it might come out for Otto he left really well there to get a touch on that one Riddle it Came off home, riddle it again. And it'll be a south end throw. No 
Oh, he must have just flicked off a South End player. It's gone uh, Derby's way. Sturridge, nice back heel. Stern challenge though by Edwards and the goal kick. Inside the last five minutes now. things David in this game but it's a very night nice finish goal this yes well we must remember that both goalkeepers Martin Taylor Paul Martin Taylor and uh, Sanson for South End both did excellently when called upon that would have opened out the game if we had had an early goal we didn't get it Thompson's missed one or two possible chances South End have gone for the game in the second half, but so far haven't been able to make that clear-cut chance. Thompson gets it back to Whelan, pass it in quickly towards Grivelitz. Needed to get way above that one for a nod down. So Steve Sutton with a goal kick for Derby. Win for either side, as I said at the start, would send them leaping up. I think Derby as many as 11 places up the table if they were to win. Wassel now, if anything does get through. It's Wassel with the kick. So surprise us with the man of the match, David. Well, I'm going to go along with the wheel, and I thought both goalkeepers did very well and have done very well. But I think to see a player with the appetite of Whelan is refreshing. An honest display of a man of many medals, but he's brought a calm composure to South End's play at times, and he's been good for the team. Sorry to cut you off in full flight there, just for a moment. I thought uh, Derby were going to spring forward and get the important goal. They've got a corner, but Ronnie Whelan then, the man of the match here at South End this afternoon. The Chris Powell getting that one away for the corner. It's a strange thing sometimes, the man of the match, but I often think that if they're a very top-class professional, very high standards, I saw Whelan make a couple of bad passes in the game, and he immediately shook his head, you know, and he was in almost an embarrassment, and he said sorry to hone a full-back for misplacing the pass. They set high standards when they've been top players. Goes again, just flicking that header for Gridlitz, but it falls for Sturridge now. Just come down. There is another Sturridge playing, isn't there? I can't quite place him. Is there not? Yes, the, yes, there is indeed. The, he has a, a brother at um, Stoke. Um, is uh, Birmingham City, and it's an, it's an elder, bro elder brother. If anybody knew the answer there, it would be... Well, I don't know the answer, Brian. I've covered myself there. I've mentioned two clubs. If anyone knows the whereabouts of Simon Sturridge, please let me know. I think he may be at Birmingham. He may be at Stoke. Well, Andy Edwards is where there. Knocked a nice ball forward. And here's Thompson. Thompson again. Well, I think that they, uh, they put 
the pressure on a little bit in the second half. It was that man Thompson that helped made it, got busy there. It was a ball in that got deflected, it spiralled up. And uh, Brave Regis, remember, he was the one that was cut in the first half. He was also central to the action in the second half. It was his challenge, fairly, I felt, on Taylor that left to, led Taylor to leaving the field. Steve Sutton looks desolate at this moment. There's Peter Taylor in, in full cry. I feel, as Theo Foley said at half-time, they could put a little bit more pressure on. I think that Derby, right from the start, with the one up to the front, uh, gave the initiative slightly to South End, and it looks as though they finally, 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 the lines are flagging. Lines flagging. It's a goal for yeah. a free kick yeah. to uh, South End United. So uh, the game's never won until it's lost. But uh, right at the death, there Regis has uh, has got the most vital goal, which would give them a super record. Sends them flying up the table. Ardiles and Perryman came to watch um, Regis, they missed it. Hobson. Willis again. Ricky Otto trying something really extravagant. Will it come for Thompson? No, because Darby get it away again. Sturridge, by the way, played three games earlier this season for Stoke, so uh, there's the answer to that. But, uh, I covered that, that Brian. I think you did. Yes, I did. But that little conversation's been overtaken by the dramatic events here with Dave Regis having scored what should surely be a winner if uh, South End could just get their tackles in now in the last seconds that remain. But here's Sturridge again being forced back. Gary Charles. It's Whelan with it. Whelan gets it free. Otto can really run now. But decides instead to look up. He saw that uh, Thompson was up there, but not much other support. Looks then to keep possession. Succeeds and then fails. Charles pumps it forward again. Four and drawn one of their last five South End. Thanks to that dramatic late goal by Dave Regis. And they have two of the next three games at home here. So um, it's a good platform for them to build for this season. Not a real man of the match, but uh, you have to say also without the goalkeeping of Paul Sampson goal would have been worthless because he's made two or three absolutely outstanding saves. The final whistle's gone. It's a victory for South End. Snatched right at the end after a lot of pressure in that second half. Dave reaches his goal. And I fancy that's his first for South End. Steve Sutton came on as a substitute goalkeeper was beaten. But a lot of good things inspired by Ronnie Whelan through the midfield. A lot of effort there by Dave Regis. Ricky Otto down one flank. And in the end, you have to say, a worthy victory for South End. The first half was pretty much shared, but South End really had the edge in the second. And Dave Regis made it paid off. Let's have a, man, a word with the man of the match, Ronnie Wheeler. Ronnie, congratulations on becoming man of the match. You'd have been blushing if you could have heard what the commentators were saying about you this afternoon. It all seems to be going really well for you here. Second half did. First half I was terrible. But um, they told me to pick me passing up second half, which I thought I did. And uh, I think we deserve to win the end. It's now five games without a defeat, three in which you've uh, kept a clean sheet. That's good going by anybody's standards. Yeah, it is after the first two I've started in, four and five against. Um, I think we've only let one goal in since then. But uh, things are going well at the moment. Depends whether we can keep it going or not. Well, let's get the ceremonial over with. Here you are, and uh, the award is Ensley Man of the Match. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. It was, uh, it was heading for a goalless draw for so long. It was a nice way for it to end, wasn't it? It was a great way for it to end. As I said earlier, I think we deserve to win. We pressured them second half. We could have had a couple of goals. Um, thankfully, we got the one we needed. Now, I must let you in on a rumour that's been circulating through the ground since it started, since the kickoff. That's Ozzy Ardiles is in the stands, taking a look at you. Yeah, it's too late. I've signed for two years. Uh, that's been great news for Southend fans. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Everything's gone well since I've come. 
Okay, Riley, thanks very much. Good. Thank you. All the best. Good. And uh, Ronnie Whelan posing for a few more pictures. So you heard it here, Ronnie telling Matt Lorenzo he has signed for South End for two years. And uh, who knows, perhaps Ozzy and Steve Perriman watching somebody else. We have plenty more goals to come. It really has been an excellent weekend for everybody around the capital area in the NZ League. A lot more goals coming up. We'll hear more from my guest David Webb as well. Back with all that very shortly. Here, yeah, mate. Mate, you dropped your flag. You dropped your flag. Do you want me to stick it in your buttonhole for you? Here, yeah, mister. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match. 1-0 then to South End. Uh, yesterday, Peter Beardsley for Newcastle scored around about the same time at Crystal Palace. Uh, David, I went there for that one. I think the difference was that Palace didn't deserve to get beaten, but Derby certainly did today. No, I thought South End definitely put their stall out properly in the second half, and they went for it. You know, And I think uh, perhaps if Derby had gone out a little bit more, there might have been a slightly varied result. But uh, the goalkeeper's pulling off good save. Mm. At the end of the day, I think they, they just had the edge, I think, South End. I don't know, Derby, for one of the glamour teams, or for one of the teams that really must feel they're in with a chance of getting into the Premiership, they disappointed me today. Yeah, it was a shame, really, because, uh, you know, they're all in guys all ganged up in midfield early on and the boy up front had a bit of early pace and after that he just fizzled away and I think you know when they stuck the boy Williams up front it seemed to me that they were just going to hang on for the nil-nil draw and it's it's a shame really you know but I say all credit to, to South End the way they approached the game in the second half. Let's have a word with the South End manager shall we? Peter Taylor he's with Matt. Peter congratulations on three points do you Thank think you. that it would have to be one in the end? Well, I think I think to be fair to be fair to the uh, chaps, I think they've just not stopped working for the last four games, five games, and uh, and again they showed it today. I think the longer the game went on, the more more we were capable of scoring. I was saying to uh, Regis earlier on that the buzz around this place is something that hasn't been for some time. Well, no, that's it. We're we're, we're getting more confident every game, so uh, I'll get some stick over there. Apologies for that, but uh, <laughs> but no, I'm very pleased with the spirit of the boys, and uh, they've worked very hard for each other, and I'm delighted with the points. A bit of mischief making going on up in the stands when people saw Ozzy Ardiles. They reckoned he was here to sign Ronnie Whelan. Well, you can't, Ozzy. I'm, I've got him for two years and I've got Chris Palmer captain for two years as well. So uh, I've made two good signings there. Well, he told me personally he was here for the sea air and that uh, he might be seeing you afterwards. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. We'll see. Now, I'll, I'll see Ozzy afterwards and uh, we'll talk about a few things. OK, congratulations, Peter. Up to eighth place in the top ten. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, a priceless goal, wasn't it, David? David Regis. I mean, you thought it was going to be a... A draw, possibly a score draw. I thought something might no, happen. You, you might said otherwise. Happen. You said you, you, yeah. said you napped it the last couple of minutes, you said. You got busy writing, and there's it was that stuff at the palace, you said. Throw the away, Jim, that's the old what Brian it was all Clocker. about. I think he deserved it, the guy. I mean, to be fair, look, he's very brave here. The fellow's trying to over kick, and he gets his head where his boot comes up. And, uh, you know, he's, it's also very difficult. He was involved in the incident with a goalkeeper, and sometimes that can put players off. Of, uh, it was that deflection, mm -hmm. wasn't it? But exactly. you've got to give Regis terrific credit. And um, He's nearly got his head kicked off again there. You know, it's, uh, he's done ever so well, and he deserved it. And that's the, the first time we really saw Peter smile this, it this weekend. Looks nine foot tall there, Peter, doesn't it? He's <laughs> the biggest midget in South End. Yeah. Um, sad, though, the game, wasn't it, for, for Martin Taylor? And I'm led to believe that David Regis is going to go and see him in hospital tonight. But really... It's a physical game, it's a tough game, and it's a man's game. It's one of those things that can just happen. Yes, and I don't think there was anything malicious in it. There was a ball there to be won, and uh, it short, saw it at the end there. He just went one, with one laid on with his head. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's brave as a lion in there. And very, very sad for the goalkeeper. Let's hope he makes a quick recovery. South End and Dave Regis cut and stitched up, still showing instinctive bravery to go in where it hurts and get a very late winner. From David and myself, bye-bye. Most department stores, this uh, 700 lump silver sugar ball makes a wonderful gift. It's marvellous. Yellow Pages, supporters of the Sunday match.